For the past 12 days, I have been attempting to cycle the entire length of Thailand. I started in Mae Sai, in the very north of the country, and I set my aim for Beitong in the very south. I had never attempted anything like this before. I was a complete newbie to cycling, and I wasn't really in top-notch fitness, but I love this country, and I wanted to try to experience it in a new way. So far, things had gone pretty good. My body was stronger than I expected. The bike was performing fine, I was just struggling with the heat and a few other issues that I'll go into during the video. You're about to watch me fail. You're about to watch me give up on something that I wanted to achieve. The funny thing about failure though is failure is never the end. It's normally just the beginning of the next attempt. As Thomas Edison once said, I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Good morning and welcome to another day on the bike. When I was going to document this series, my mission wasn't to sort of tour across Thailand and show you everywhere that, like we did with Dreamy. My mission was just to go from the very north to the very south and document what is it like physically, mentally and emotionally to cycle across Thailand as a newbie, as someone who doesn't have any experience doing anything like this. Is it possible? What's it like? Today was one of those days where I just woke up and I just... Man, it was really, really hard to motivate myself. I, I just, I feel like I'm running on empty, um, and I have, uh, I have diarrhea. Okay, I'm sorry, but uh, woke up at three o'clock in the morning, and I've been awake now for like three or four hours. The sun's just come up, um, but I think, I think whatever I had in me is gone. If you know what I mean. So, I'm really low energy. I'm really low motivation. But I'm in this hotel on the side of the highway. It, it, there is nothing here, there's no food, there's nothing to do. If I have a rest day, I will be miserable, even though I want to take a rest day. So I'm just gonna push on, keep on trucking, baby. It's a hundred kilometers to Pit Santa Look. I'd learnt so far that anything over a hundred kilometers in a day just equals a miserable day. I just can't cope at the minute with these distances. Anything over 80 kilometers, I just start to feel completely drained, not just from the physical exertion, but the heat that Thailand is delivering at this time of year. It's normally much cooler than this. This is mid-February that I was doing this, and, well, there's not much I can do about the weather. This is the closest I've come to wanting to give up. This is... Uh... I'm not going to lie, this is pretty miserable right now. I am so dizzy. And it's so hot, it's so hot. I've drank so much water, I've, I've drank four litres of water, two Gatorades. I'm down to my last bottle of water. The next, the next uh, spot to get some drinks and to rest properly is in 14 kilometers. It's only quarter past 11, but it is 35 degrees. And uh, I think the diarrhea last night and just being a little bit run down is catching up on me. And I'm just miserable. I came, I found this little roadside shack and I was gonna lie down, have a little break, but it's covered in bird shit. Like the whole thing is just absolutely covered in bird shit. Um, also, today's leg, and tomorrow's leg. There, there are no roads parallel to this that just go through the countryside. Um, they all go east to west. The only road that's running south between here and the next 200 kilometers is this road, the main highway. And so there's just very little shade. There's very little to look at. You're just keeping yourself in the hard shoulder and you're trying your best not to get hit by a truck. And I've still got 50 kilometers until Pit, Pit Sanaluk. I'm only halfway. 
because it, it took a long time to get up. There, was, there were hills. I thought I'd done all the hills, but there were, there were hills. There were so many hills. All I want to do is lie down here for an hour, maybe take a nap. But it's covered in shit. Tough day today. And we're only halfway through. <laughs> I didn't have the energy or the patience to film anything for the rest of that day. Just rest assured that I cycled for 100 kilometers that day and I was hot and very miserable by the end of the day. It took me nine hours to get to Pitsanaluk province and to the city center. I limped into a hotel, which was actually really nice. So I took a complete full rest day. I did a lot of recovery and the only thing I filmed was me cleaning the bike. But even with that rest day behind me, I was still struggling. I was still miserable. So I had one last tactic, one last throw of the dice that might help me because at this point, all I was about to break. Before we get to some of the bad news, I've got some great news thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Aerolo. If any of you travel either to Thailand or anywhere this year. You're gonna to need to get into the technology of eSIMS. It's a travel hack that I've only just really recently discovered and it's transformed the way I travel. Do you remember my recent trip to Sri Lanka? Well, that was the last trip I took before I was even aware of eSIM technology and how easy that is to use. So when I landed in Colombo, I remember being tired, going through immigration, going through baggage reclaim, and immediately going to one of the desks, queuing up to get a local SIM card. Installing a new SIM card abroad is normally quite an annoying process, right? You have to queue up, they take out your current SIM card and normally just sellotape it to the back of your phone case, which is not ideal. Then you have to present your ID, it takes a while, you have to pay in cash normally, and then you get quite a limited local plan and when I was in Sri Lanka that data plan didn't last very long and it ran out at two o'clock in the morning when I was watching my beloved Newcastle play against Chelsea we were winning I think and I really wanted to continue watching so I had to switch over to my old sim card and go data roaming I didn't think it was going to cost me that much money but I ended up getting charged a fortune and all of this headache could have been avoided if I'd known about Aerolo and their amazing eSIM packages. eSIM technology is here right now, I just didn't really know about it, and that's why Aerolo reached out to help promote and spread the word about eSIM technology and how easy it is. So if you're going traveling to say Thailand or anywhere this year, Aerolo covers over 200 countries and territories, and you can pre-buy the eSIM using their app or their website. It takes a couple of minutes, it's really easy to install. And then, the second you touch down, and it's safe to do so, you can toggle the data or the coverage, you can call or text home to let your loved ones know you've landed safely. And eSIM, guys, is just a SIM card, except it's not tangible, it's not actually something you physically put into your phone. You download it over the internet, install it through your phone software, and yes, most phones these days support eSIM technology. If you have anything relatively new, you'll be fine. And to sweeten the deal, Aerolo are providing you $3 off your first eSIM. All you have to do is use the code PADDY3 at checkout, use the link in the description, or you can take a picture of this QR code right now. That'll take you to the landing page and then select the country that you're going to soon, peruse the deals that they have, choose one that suits you, and then put in that code. You'll get $3 off and boom, when you land in your future destination, You'll be able to search the web, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Right, now it's time for the bad news. I just broke a bottle of water. Hello, welcome back. It's uh, 3.32 a.m. And it's another day cycling across Thailand. Um, good and bad news, as you can probably hear in my voice. So, sounds like mostly bad news, doesn't it? It kind of is. <laughs> I'm trying my best to find a positive. 
Let's start with the bad news. We are in this part of the country which I knew would suck because we're out of the northern mountains, which is, you know, interesting and varied and f f challenging but fun to cycle across. And soon we'll be in the south, which means we'll be cycling along the coast and there'll be palm trees and beaches and mountains and delicious food. But right now I'm in the middle of Thailand. I'm 140 kilometers north of a place called Nakhon Sawan and all that's been behind me and all that's in front of me is flat, dry, barren land. This is the main area of Thailand where they grow crops such as rice and corn and um, there aren't very many towns and cities. Everything is 100 kilometers plus apart from each other. Soon we'll be nearer Bangkok and there's small towns and cities all over the place and I'll be able to do easier days, 60, 70 kilometers max. But today we have 140 kilometers, by far the longest journey I have to go to. There's nothing in between here and Nakhon Sawan except for fields and a main road. So it's gonna suck, but that's not the worst part of the bad news. The worst part of the bad news is there's a bloody heat wave. So the land of smiles will soon be turning into the land of sweat. Yes, that is right. Thailand is preparing for an intense heat wave mm. with forecasts indicating significantly higher temperatures, potentially reaching up to 44 and a half degrees Celsius mm -hmm. in some areas. Weather predictions for the week of February 19th to February 25th show a worrying trend towards extreme heat, prompting warnings for the public to limit outdoor activities during the hottest parts of the day and to ensure adequate hydration. Now, Thailand is not exactly a cold destination at the best of times. It's hot all year round. But I wanted to start this cycle trip um, before it got even hotter. It's gonna get even hotter in April. But we're having the heat wave early this year, so yay. Um, <laughs> where I'm gonna be cycling to today, it's going to be 37 degrees by lunchtime. And I don't wanna die. I don't wanna die and I don't want to have heat stroke. One of my inspirations to not only just cycle across Thailand, but you know, to do adventure travel in general is a guy called Ed Pratt. He's this British guy who about six years ago cycled across the world on a unicycle. Incredible feat of physical and mental endurance. And if he can cycle across the world in a unicorn, then I'll be able to cycle across Thailand on a bicycle, right? And so yesterday, and in the previous video, you've seen me struggling with this heat and these distances. And I remembered that he unicycled across Thailand during Songkran, which is in the hottest month, you know, in this country. And I thought to myself, let me go back and rewatch his episode. Let me see how he dealt with the heat. Because I remember him cycling or unicycling in the heat all day, every day. And I was thinking, how did he do it? Is he superhuman? So yesterday I was watching the episode and I forgot. This is the episode where he got mad heat stroke and nearly died. <laughs> My body's gone and failed on me. Oh, oh, fuck. Oh. So I thought to myself, I can't repeat his mistakes. I can't just cycle in the heat and put it down to sweaty and hot and we'll get through it. It's very dangerous to do any exercise during this kind of heat wave. So I've come up with a plan. <laughs> My plan is to leave early, 3.30, or it's probably gonna be about four o'clock by the time I've stopped getting ready. And I'm just gonna try and get as many of these kilometers out of the way before it gets to 11 o'clock in the morning. 11 o'clock in the morning, it's gonna be 35 degrees. And that's just too hot for anyone. So I was thinking like, there's just no way that this section of the country is gonna, is gonna get any worse. It's barren, there's a heat wave. I've got diarrhea, I've been up since one o'clock this morning. I've got a headache, I've got back pain, I'm knackered, I'm miserable, and it's a heat wave. So I thought, let's wake up, since I'm up anyway, having the shits. Let's wake up. The hotel was nice enough to give me a breakfast, bless them, so I'll eat that somewhere, and I'm gonna just crack on. I'm just gonna start this day's ride early as possible and get to where we're going hopefully before the heat wave evaporates me. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I don't 
think this is a good idea. Going into the longest stretch, 140 kilometers to Nakhon Sawan. That's the longest by almost 40% that I've ever done. And I'm starting it miserable with diarrhea and a headache and exhaustion. The heat and my sickness, they're bringing on anxiety, they're bringing on uncertainty. And I always tell myself to just, to do this kind of stuff if, if it was fun. No point torturing yourself. And I just feel like I've been torturing myself for a while. I'm gonna keep cycling, at least for an hour. <laughs> and see how I feel. Miserable Paddy on a bicycle, wishing he was in Bangkok with my girlfriend. <laughs> Watching the telly. <sighs> Just keeping it real. This is f***ing, this is f***ing <laughs> I have to admit that the first hour or so of me cycling through Pitanaluk, heading south towards Nakhon Sawan, I thought I'd cracked the code. It was only 26 Celsius, the sun was nowhere to be seen, and there was hardly any traffic. But an hour or so later, when I reached the long straight highway, the only road heading south, I came to learn that the main roads here in Thailand don't have many lights. And so for much of this cycle, I was actually cycling on the main road in complete darkness and my bicycle lights are not strong enough really to show me the way nor and more importantly to show the massive trucks that whiz by where I am on the road. This idea of cycling early in the morning had sadly, annoyingly, devastatingly not panned out at all. Right, I am on the verge of packing this all in. Let me just go through what's going on in my head. So, travel, adventures, they're supposed to be fun. Yeah, they can be challenging from time to time and you have good days and you have bad days. And I'm used to it, I've been traveling for a long time. So I know yesterday, the day before, was a bit rough. Today is going to be rough and it'll start to get better. But I just can't see, I can't see how this trip is going to turn better. How's it going to get better? I, I'm not meeting anyone because I'm spending all day on the bike. And it's, you know, I'm cycling on the highway. I, I thought I'd be out in the fields the whole time, out in the rural area the whole time. Um, and I feel like that will happen eventually in the south but this section ever since I left Prey I don't know maybe I'm just being dramatic I just feel like I'm not I'm not meeting people I'm not having adventures I'm not seeing unique things I'm not experiencing Thailand I'm just on a bicycle on the side of a highway trying not to get run over and suffering in the heat so here's, here's my plan, because I've talked myself out of 100% giving up three times in the last half an hour. I don't want to get run over, so I'm just waiting for the sun to come up. It looks like it's starting to come up a little bit already, which is good. And once the sun is up a bit more, I'm going to get back on the bike and I'm going to bail. I'm not going to cycle on this highway anymore. For 111 kilometers to Nakhon Sawan, I'm just not doing it. I'm gonna turn left and I'm gonna head into the, the rural farm area and I'm gonna aim for a, another town that's not actually south, it's more like east from here. It's called Pitchit. And I'm gonna cycle through the rural area in the morning light during sunrise. I'm hoping I'm gonna connect with nature and the countryside and see some beautiful things and not see all of these trucks whiz past and narrowly 
take me out and stuff. So it's just, I mean, cycling on a highway, like it's the stupidest idea ever. And doing it in Thailand is just like two times more stupid, obviously, because you just don't know if these drivers can see you, the, the motorway's not lit. And I don't want to die on this trip. So a few kilometers, then I'm going to turn left and I'm going to head into the countryside. I'm going to cycle about 40 kilometers to pitch it. When I get to pitch it, if I'm still miserable, I think I'm going to call it because I'm just not enjoying myself. is so cool. I've come off the main highway, we're out in the rice fields. Within five minutes I see something interesting. This guy is about to take off an agricultural drone. You know, it's funny, this morning's ride, once the sun had come up, it was beautiful, like truly gorgeous. I was seeing and experiencing the countryside of Thailand the way that I had envisioned would have been much more the case during this tour. This beautiful countryside was what I had expected to see for much of this trip. And even though I did have a few blissful sections just like this, it just wasn't commonplace. And the fact is, heading north to south in Thailand, you're just on the main roads for 90% of the time. And all of this beautiful countryside I was experiencing, I was actually, like I said, not even heading south, I was heading east. And that just really zapped away any remaining optimism that I had. a train coming into the train station right now going to Bangkok I've just been sat here stressing out do I give up do I call it do I postpone this till the winter do I just call it what you like but do I just quit right now I've been at this train station for half an hour trying to convince myself to do both and I, there's so many good options for both be brave persist, it'll get better. And the other half of my brain, this is too big for you. You can't do this. You're not enjoying yourself. Go home and take it as an L. Just, just call it a loss. Call it you learned something. <laughs> I really don't know what I'm going to do, but wherever I do, I've probably got about four minutes to make a decision.